Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2 Definitive Edition. My name is Saiken and we're playing on Honor Mode Difficulty, uh, to be more precise, Honor Mode Difficulty Plus, as we are increasing the game difficulty, by the way, here, Honor Mode, uh, to uh, scale with enemy levels and increase the enemy levels even two levels above us. It is time to explore for Joyce Prison, and you can see I prepared a little bit by already removing all of the trash mobs here. The characters have evolved a bit, and before we jump into today's session, where we're going to focus on the two fights that are available in the basement, you can see we're now level 7, and uh, we have upgraded the equipment quite a bit. Same skills still uh, with Ethan, we did some crafting to get uh, explosive traps, which is uh, crafting uh, reside between uh, our huntsmen and uh, and pyrokinetics. And for Saiken, we also expanded his skill sets quite a bit. So, long story short, I think overall the characters have now more depth than they had before. Which is going to be needed because we're fighting a very difficult battle. There are many ways of how to deal with this battle here. Uh, the Flensers Playground. The way that works uh, the best for me personally was always to focus like right up here and make sure that we are prepping the area properly. So with just a very few minor preparations, we should be good to go. Good. The idea here is not to cluster up too much. Those will stand a bit further down. Saiken and Sibyl will stand up here. And the beauty about this position is you can see we have pretty wide angle of shots that are available. Now, if we play our cards right and uh, prepare everything here as planned, we really shouldn't have much of an issue. Good. So, let's finish the preparation. And make sure that we also stand in some sort of liquid. In this case, we're using blood up here. Good, and that's about the preparation. Really minimal. Ethan will start to uh, discuss with Niles. Niles is a Pretty uh, burst, bursty champion, so you got to be extremely careful when approaching him. Let's summon our incarnate. And what worked well for me, to be honest, is just ignoring all the uh, dialogue. And directly jump into the combat. There is no downside of, quite literally, no, uh, no downside of doing that. I am surprised though that uh, Niles himself has not leveled up. The others have. Niles, however, still remains level four. Interesting. Okay. As for as. For Seville, and this will get her in combat. And yeah, Saiken so far is not in combat, but I think that's fine. He will eventually get into combat, no worries. Um, let's start with those.
First things first, we're trying to summon the totems outside of uh, the water. That way, once we're turning the water and contaminate it, we should have no issue. Let's make sure we're regenerating. Uh, all of uh, the monks that you're going to see are going to have some sort of a magical ability and they normally have that so it's not just a matter of um, not just a matter of the mods that I've installed they are actually quite strong a lot of them have uh, some sort of water skills as you can see so you got to be careful to keep your uh, your magical resistance up Good, let's start here. I think there's no disadvantage of us going down there. So we could have used Adrenaline uh, in order to CC the Monk, but that's not necessary. That however is unfortunate. We can deal with the Charm. We just need Frost Armor and cast it on Ethan. Good, lots of monks are coming in our way. Good, since we can't hit anyone, we're preparing with uh, Seville and to make sure that she's not a target. So we're making her invisible. As for Ifan, is he a... Oh, no, um, we need to use clear mind. Well, that's fine. Saiken is... Oh, Saiken is not in the combat. Well, in which case, perfect timing to get some clear mind going. There we go. That solved the problem, and Saiken definitely should be in combat, so here we go. Good, we gotta pull them towards us. They are using a few too many ranged abilities. And as you can see, most of the monks end up having either um, freezing skills, so a glacial fissure and so on, or they do have uh, silencing skills. Now, uh, our boot modifications uh, come in handy because we can't uh, we can't be knocked down whilst moving on ice. And this should effectively pull them over here. Next thing to consider that I should uh, warn you about when uh, attempting this fight is uh, these meat golems here, even in the unbuffed version, deal quite a, uh, quite a bit of damage. Uh, plus, they tend to 
set a disease, which is a problem. It's a diseased character you can't be healed. So at least for one turn you're going to suffer the consequences of the de uh, disease. I'm a bit disappointed that we can't reach anyone, but I don't want to lo uh, lose our absolutely phenomenal position up here. So we're going to wait. It's interesting how little differences make, uh, or little, little positioning differences might make all the difference here. Many, many iterations when I played that fight, I never had any problems with them approaching us. So that's the first time that that ever happened. Good. We are burning. We're using bleed fire in order to re uh, reduce their fire resist. Well, that has hit only, unfortunately, only the golem. So again, we don't want to put the totems um, into this area here because it's soon going to burn. So defensive, I don't know why they aren't uh, why they wouldn't want to come. Finally. Ifan is going to protect us up here. So in terms of items that he can utilize... I was thinking about a Firestorm Grenade to start, uh, to start blowing all of this up. It's unfortunately a bit of a gap here. Yeah. Nah, he can't hit anyone. And I really don't want to give up his position. There we go, finally a target. Good, as for the meat golem, let's start dealing with it. Fire trap for 80. And that's a kill. Um. You know what? Let's set both of them aflame. Mm. 
There we go. He's burning. Time to combust him. Unfortunately, he's barely out of range. Oh, holy. Yeah, he's not leveled, which is a bit of an issue. Apparently the mod does not level this particular boss. Everything else is properly leveled. Just not uh, Niles, which is a bit of a shame because we almost one shot it. Yeah, one more fireball and he's gone. All right, perfect. Uh, this guy here absolutely looks like he would need to be knocked down there we go oh we're diseased that was not the most clever way Gotta be careful, I wasn't realizing that we had a, had a disease on us. So, in terms of letting him move, hmm. Ifan has about 45 hit points, which is enough to be teleported out of danger without dying. He's pretty close to death now, but he has. He's at least out of any form of danger. Wait a second. Ah, he's regenerating. Ah. Okay, that's an issue. And we're silenced, right? Oh my gosh. I think we just killed Ethan. Yeah, that was not necessarily clever. I mean, getting him out of uh, there, there wasn't much of an alternative because the silent monk would have elsewise just moved up and killed him. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't hand uh, potions to someone else during your turn. That's a bummer. We even would have Fortify to save him, but yeah, since we're silenced, there's really no way that we can do anything. The only hope that we do have is uh, that the decaying uh, status will stop next turn. Never mind. Even though we teleported him out of range, uh, they still got him.
That's the biggest disadvantage of um, having a tank. Well, he's not really a tank. He's because tanks in this game aren't really efficient. He's. I would probably describe him as a crowd controller. And that is that itself is not a problem, but going into melee certainly is. Let's heal everyone back up. We go over, we're fine. And Ifan can definitely deal with both of them and do what he's supposed to do, which is crowd control them. This here should deal with him. There we go. Good, the idea now is to simply burst this guy down. The fight is over. Although I must say it wasn't the cleanest of all fights. Could have crowd control way more. And the biggest fail was probably on um, uh, killing Ifan. Although in hindsight he would have probably died anyways. It is a reasonably difficult battle, so if if you have a death or a two, nothing to be ashamed about. There we go, and this plus this almost gets him down, finally. More difficult than I would have expected, I remembered it uh, easier, but yeah, then again, little changes in your position can make a large impact. We clustered up um, quite a lot up here at the end. And the death of Ifan certainly could have been prevented. The drained want is important this year. Oh no, never mind, it's not.
There is a loot chest up here, which you shouldn't forget, and then Niles himself has some decent loot. Nice, we got an armor. We got an armor, level 4, but it's still decent. Strength, warfare, and summoning. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I like the the warfare buff. Warfare and summoning are not optimal together. Although you could use it in order to get executioner, which uh, as talent requires two levels in uh, one level in warfare. We got a few daggers here, but level 4 gear is is mostly outdated by now. For you, if you're not using uh, the mod to level the enemies, it's probably going to be really decent loot, specifically the daggers for Rogue, or in this case for Ifan would have made an absolute amount of sense. So, yeah. That's it, that was Niles. Uh, next up, we're going to go over here, basically pull this lever. This will uh, free up the door here. And that's exactly where we're going to uh, go next. But that's happening in the next episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, leave a comment down below and hit the like button. See you in the next run. Bye bye.